Citizen Television. And welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host. And this is for the weekend beginning Friday, January 29th, 2021, going to uh, next Friday, the uh, 5th of February. So let's see what we've got here. We'll, by then, the moon will be officially in Leo. It will be in the lunar mansion known as MAGA. So one of the things about today is... There's some uneasiness, you know, because the moon's in what's known as a gandanta or not. So whenever a planet is in a water sign about to go into a fire sign in the sidereal zodiac, you know, and this isn't the common Western stuff that, that most of the show is about, it actually creates a sort of tension. It's like, oh, I got to get out of this knot. You know, like how you need a massage and you want somebody to work out all those kinks and stuff. Yeah, that's that's kind of where you're at there. Um Alesha has wisdom, it's not very good at confrontations, Mars is debilitated here, it's, but they tend to, people that have Alesha moons, um, Alesha rising, maybe even Alesha suns or Alesha venuses tend to have really beautiful eyes, and they can be hypnotizing, and there is sort of a sexual energy, but they also have searing pains in relationship, it's sort of hard to get out of. So there you go. There's Alesha in a nutshell. Let's talk about everything else going on. So in Western astrology today, we'd say we got a moon in Leo. <clears throat> and moon is going to go into Virgo, I believe at like just a little after midnight. So Saturday is going to be Virgo moon, kind of earthy. Um, if your ground's not frozen, you can get out in the garden. <clears throat> and the other interesting thing is that um, since last Monday... Tuesday, we got out of Cal Sarpa Yoga, where all the planets are on one side. Why? Because we have the help of the moon. You know, the moon is moves through every sign in the zodiac in 28 days, and so we're not as quite as lopsided because we have this nice <clears throat> moon in Leo. So, I mean, with that said, um, we are going to go uh, side by side. The other change this week is Venus getting out of Capricorn, going into Aquarius in the Western Zodiac. So, um, it's sort of interesting. I mean, Venus, <clears throat> Aquarius is the coldest sign of the Zodiac, you know, and, and so, but um, Venus actually likes Saturn ruled signs, so there really won't be that much difference to be expected from this. I, I would say just the longing to be social. You know, we have a longing to be social. And that longing is going to be more or less emphasized with uh, <clears throat> Venus and Aquarius. Okay, so, sign by sign, here we go, starting with you, Aries, you're on. All right, so greetings, Aries, welcome to your horoscope. So we're looking at Mars in the second house. Now, a lot of times the second house, even though it, you know, commonly in Western astrology we talk about materialism, money, resources, but it's also values. It's also um, your lower jaw and um, your neck and throat issues. And it is also family members' values. And it's also kind of like how you're treated as you're growing up, especially between like 7 and 14. Um, that's what happens in the second house. And then so, um, so that's where Mars is. So a lot of these issues are coming up. The other thing is that since it rules your voice and your throat and the way you talk and Mars is there, Mars can be kind of like an arguer. Now, Aries don't like to argue. They're so peaceful, right? Wrong. <laughs> Show me an Aries who doesn't like a good argument, okay? Um, you know, there's... <laughs> 
I'm sure they're out there because I probably have a bunch of planets and other signs, you know, because we are every sign of the zodiac, every one of us, folks. But the planets are grahas, they are grabbers, and they tend to manipulate things. Now, Aquarius for Aries is about your social life, it's about helpful friends, sometimes even older siblings that help you. So they could be a little bit more in focus this week. Um, there is just this gigantic cluster, uh, we'll censor that next word, in your 11th house. And actually, this can bring money, this can bring some form of good fortune to you. And it's also kind of like this party waiting to happen. I hope it's better than Zoom. <coughs> okay. All right. So, um, greetings, Taurus, and welcome to your horoscope. Uh, what do we got going on today? Okay, well, we've got uh, Uranus and Mars together. Oh, good God Almighty. Um, you know, Mars likes to stir things up. Uranus likes to do things that are completely unpredictable. And so, you know, I mean, like, let's talk about the United States federal government, for instance. Like, I mean, basically the Republicans have been in power since Ronald Reagan, since 1981. I mean, he, yeah, Clinton was a Republican, you know, posing as a Democrat for real. You know, there wasn't policies to help poor people or, you know, there was just the war on drugs, prisons and, and corporate elitism, all that stuff. Okay, that was the Clinton thing. Um, Obama. Obama couldn't do crap because of the Republican House and Senate and, you know, and, you know, the, the racial antagonism towards him. And the other thing is he, you know, he bombed the F out of people in Afghanistan and uh, gave a lot of corporate privileges, especially to insurance companies and other companies. Um, drug companies are getting a lot of privilege. Um, the pharmaceutical industry is twice as powerful as oil companies today. Wow. And that was a Rockefeller plan back in the 40s. So, you know, it's always interesting to kind of look where, why is, why are things like this? What are the roots? If you just look at the surface and you don't look at the history, you really don't know squat. And that's, that's the fact, folks. So it's nice to have the old astrologer around. So Taurus, <clears throat> we've got Venus moving into Aquarius. It's moving in your in midheaven. This is your karma house of how you serve the public. What is your karma with the public? What are your talents and skills? How are you operating with them? And there is a lot of demand on you right now. I mean, what are we looking at here? We're looking at so many, so many planets together. And I mean, if you were counting it in the sidereal zodiac, you'd throw Pluto right in there with the whole thing. And um, <clears throat> there is change, change, change. And there's just a lot of pressure on you to perform. And give your services and how are you showing up that's really the question taurus how are you showing up right now because the whole world is watching you know so it's like the chicago 7 and 68 the whole world is watching the whole world is watching <laughs> yeah only only now i mean the, the rabbit hole and the confusion is on multiple levels nobody's pure as virgin driven snow uh they're <laughs> yikes Corruption's everywhere, folks. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, um, greetings, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. All right. So, yeah. Danger, Will Robinson, Mercury going retrograde. Yes, indeed it does. And when does it happen? It happens on, um, oh boy, let's get back, get back here, on Saturday at uh, 7.52 a.m. So Saturday at 7.52 a.m. with a Virgo moon, <clears throat> Mercury going retrograde. There's a message here, folks. <clears throat> you know, because the moon also rules our thoughts. Um, the, the thing that's going down is critical analysis. Now, it's really interesting that um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, tw Twitter, all that stuff are censoring things, censoring people in the United States. But in Germany and Poland, they won't let them do that. They said, no, you can't censor stuff. Free speech is important. We don't care you're a private corporation because most people are getting their news and entertainment from these sources now. Um, and um, the fact that they're taking away information reminds me a lot of the People's Republic of China, um, the Soviet Union, other totalitarian states, except with money. 
lots and lots and lots of money. All right. So um, <clears throat> there's certain things you're not allowed to question anymore out there. I won't mention names about what they are because pr probably most of you know what they are and you might feel one way about this or other. But let's look at let's just talk about Big Pharma for a little bit. And let's talk about their um, relationship to Monsanto, who genetically modified seeds, for instance. Let's talk about um, uh, perhaps a half a million children being crippled by an oral oral vaccine that um, wasn't really proven or tested. Uh, ouch. And experiments on people who are mentally ill, homeless, to see what these drugs do. That does not sound good to me for some reason. Maybe it does to you. And maybe you feel, oh yeah, shoot me up, shoot me up, I'll be safe. You know, there is no guarantee you're safe. In 1986, Reagan said that we can't sue these companies because people were suing the pharmaceutical in industry for vaccines that basically went bad, and so they were losing money. And so w when you can't sue somebody and they're given free license to do whatever they want, I mean, yeah, most of the time everybody, everything seems okay, okay? 95% of the time everything seems to be okay, you know? And, and so maybe that gives you some peace of mind. And, um, you know, but you know what? The virus is mutating. There's going to be another need for another vaccine. Even Fauci says, wait a couple months. I mean, I... I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. You know, it might take a couple of years for the cancer to show up or the paralysis. We don't know. And it's not to generate fear, but it's also to say when we can't question, when we just take blind trust and people that are questioning stuff are now censored and not allowed to talk so we can't critically think about things anymore, um, it's a really gnarly world out there. Well, it's a really gnarly world if you're in the ICU. Yeah, of course it's a really gnarly world if you're in the ICU. Duh. You know, I, I, I know people with the virus. And, you know, I would highly recommend that, you know, you go to a store. It's not that big of a deal to wear, wear a freaking mask. I mean, come on. It's only like 15 minutes of your life. Get it together, people. You know, that's uh, wearing a mask is a lot better than getting shot up with a foreign substance. That's That's my, that's my two cents on that. So, Gemini... Stay safe, you know, Mercury's retrograde, and um, greetings cancer, welcome to your horoscope. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> um, what basically is going on here for you is there's this deep transformation, there's this deep change, there's a lot of loss, there's, there's karmic debt to be paid. Um, we don't know where this is coming from. Um, and we don't know where this is going. And in some ways, <laughs> some people feel 100% like they do know, and some people feel like 100% on the other side they know. I don't know. I'll be really honest. I don't know. And I want everybody to be safe and take care of themselves. But I just would say, caution, caution, caution. Um, and... Um, I know people that are getting vaccinated because they want to be able to see loved ones, and I think that's a legitimate reason. Um, as far as people, you know, belly aching about not being able to travel or whatnot, you know, I mean, that first world problem, you know what I mean? Get, get an imagination. Start loving where you live and improving it so that you don't have to go somewhere else to have a good time. Yeah, that's my answer to that. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're in a really whiny baby-like time, but I mean, the amount of you that are really privileged is diminishing every day. <laughs> and that includes you, Cancer. So, I mean, this is death. I mean, this is death, sex, other people's property, the occult studies, things like this, astrology. So it's like, how are you going to get over it, Cancer? How are you going to do this? Um, you're going to work the magic. You're going to start meditating. You're going to start praying. You're going to start giving to the poor. You're going to start doing the things that lighten the load of karma, hanging out with godly people um, that are looking for your best. Get in your heart. Be in nature. Uh, watch what birds do and watch what animals do. And, and, you know, watch the swelling of the trees as they're about to bud. And, you know, new life is about to happen. Um, this week, week is Candlemas, you know, St. Bridget's Day. It's, um, 
It's a cross quarters. We're halfway done with winter, folks. Let's be happy. Um, you know, it's uh, here in the northern hemisphere. And, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's rough times for cancer right now. And I'm not going to, you know, scoot around about it. Well, greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. I mean, it's an interesting week for you. Because you're really kind of like on the outside looking in. You've got this cluster of planets in the seventh house. So everything's about relationship. Everything's about career. Relationship, career. Relationship, career. Um, you know, that's, that's huge. And um, it's affecting you. You have a dristy. You have a gaze at what's going on right now. And what I'm thinking is, we're not putting, we're not bringing everybody to the table. We're much more comfortable calling people that don't have our points of views idiots than we are like saying, well, what is it that causes you to believe that? I'm curious about where you're getting your information from and why that is. Um, and I want to say this too, is like, you really can't fact check things on computer anymore. You really have to go to the library. You're going to have to really poke around a lot deeper because now... Things are so um, under control that even common sources of verifying information have a bias. They're owned by huge corporations. They're owned by things that want to manipulate. There's an algorithm, you know, even, you know, while you're to manipulate your thoughts. <clears throat> this is why I would say meditation and prayer, more important now than ever. <clears throat> But in the sweet spot for Leo is that you're the kind of person that really wants to negotiate. And a lot of you are smart enough, especially those of you with like an Alesha position, <clears throat> are going to um, get to a place where we can all feel a sense of harmony and relax and feel better. All right. That is, that is it for Leo. All relationship stuff. <clears throat> and then we go to Virgo. <clears throat> and for you, Virgo, it's about keeping healthy. And it's about serving others. And it's about getting a job, possibly with the government. Um, even honoring your uncles and aunts. Dealing with small pets. Um, making donations. <clears throat> exercising, getting yourself in better shape, too, you know. Oh, round is a shape, yeah, yeah, I heard it. <clears throat> round is a shape that generally means your back is having problems, you're losing your circulation, you know, do you want to keep your foot? Get yourself in shape, you know, get yourself in good physical health, you know, and, and eat whole foods that are healthy, you know, stay away from the complex carbs and grains, you know, eat more fruits and vegetables. That's a, that's a common sense thing. Um, <clears throat> some of you are going to need to avoid gluten. Some of you are going to need to avoid dairy. Some of you are going to need to quit sugar. Um, these are the sense things. Some of you are going to need to drink more water. Some of you are going to have to quit caffeine. Some of you are going to have to quit alcohol. I mean, these are, these are all um, sensible things right now. Because um, keeping your immune system strong is what's going to get you through. And that's what I want to see happen for you, is that you have a strong immune system and you get through. Okay. Greetings, Libra. My little Libra. Okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. So, I mean, in the balance of things, um, all these planets in Aquarius are in your fifth house. This is really fun. This is creative. This is benefic. This is wonderful, especially with Jupiter there. Jupiter loves the fifth house. Probably a lot of you didn't know this, but <clears throat> this, is a, this is a fact. This is a fact, Jane, and a fact, Jack. <laughs> but you're going to need more than fact check. You're going to have to do the hard work yourself and uh, research who's funding your fact checkers. <laughs> that is... Now, you know, now we're talking about stuff, right? Follow the money every time, folks. Um, anyhow. The fact is that Uranus and Mars are in your eighth house. And, you know, death, sudden things. I mean, in this time, I definitely know of people that have died suddenly. And, um... 
Most of the people I've known that's gotten the virus has been pretty mild, thank goodness. But there's other viruses out there, and they la 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 la. Be afraid, be very afraid. We can control you now. <laughs> I mean, the people that trip me out the most, though, I think, are the people that have mask on when there's like a hundred feet away outside from anybody else. That's just like bizarre. I mean. I'm hoping they have COVID almost because it's like, oh my God, I hope you, that's why you have the mask on because you know you have it and you're just trying to protect all the animals and birds or whatever might fly by you um, if you're outside like that. That's just weird, okay? That is, that's like it just going a little bit beyond, or maybe you're a thief and you're trying to look hip. I don't know. I, no, I don't know. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's like the harem with a thing over their face, you know, sort of sexy, I don't know. Shows the eyes, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, there's reasons for everything. And then there's the people that won't wear it inside the store that are breathing in your face. And you're just like, oh, my God, will you ever learn? Freaking A, people, you know, show some courtesy. Um, and, you know, we've been, we've been in this game for almost a year now. And, and you, Libra, are in your heart, though. You want to be loving. You want to be kind. You want to make connection. If you have children and you're a Libra, this is what it's all about. It's about you and your kids. Not about other people's kids. It's about you and your kids. What are you doing with it? What are you doing about it? Um, <clears throat> and because Venus is moving into your fifth house this week, love is in the air. So maybe you've had the pandemic blues. You've been without a partner. You've been single for a while. I get that. That sucks, kind of. You know what I mean? Except for the part where nobody's telling you what to do or making your life miserable. <laughs> that part? When you get a partner, you'll find out. <laughs> oh boy, okay. And once again, here we go. Scorpio, welcome to your horoscope. So, okay, so Mars, you know, Mars and Scorpio. Let's talk about Pluto. Well, we'll get there. Um, yeah, but really, Mars in Scorpio is about deeper action to get rid of evil. Not just surface knee-jerk reactions. You know, those quick knee-jerk reactions. Aries good at that. Um, Scorpio's taking its time. It's a fixed sign. So everything in that sense is in your seventh house, a relationship. Um Amazing Vedic astrology teacher Sanjay Ross says people with Mars in the seventh house can be such sweethearts. Well, we don't they don't always have Uranus there when it's happening. So that's it's different. Why is that? Because, you know, seventh house is about negotiation. Seventh house is 10 houses from the 10th house. So there's a lot of career partnership things that happen in the seventh house, too. It's not just about love. It's not just about marriage. It's partly about that. And the other part is you could be shocked. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like a wife who's had a, a man with a low libido and is really like tired of this and suddenly he takes a little blue pill and it's like, oh, everything's going on. <laughs> or a man who's had a wife that's kind of gone cold and she takes a little special something for herself and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, you know, the fireworks. So, I mean, there, there could be some of that. And then... Um, <clears throat> I would say since Mercury's retrograde and we've got this Uranus-Mars conjunction in your seventh house, do not sign any paperwork. Do not get into any contracts. Take your time. Read the fine print, for God's sake. Um, yeah, the Pluto and the Capricorn, kind of close to the Aquarius stuff. All that all that planet stuff's in your, in your fourth house. So it's like, what is your inner happiness? How are you making yourself happy, Scorpio? Do you love yourself? A lot of times we don't. You know, we're despised and we don't always get in good information about ourselves, what our gifts are. That's why you should check me out as an astrologer. I'll find them out what those are for you, help you out. And um, let's go to Sagittarius here. Greetings, Sag. Welcome to your horoscope. So all these Aquarius planets are in the third house. Um, that's communication. It's prana, folks. It's breathing. It's um, working with your hands. It's doing artwork. It's... Um, your, your younger siblings, you know, or, or brothers and sisters in general, where they're at. It's also a place where you gain courage. Now, juxtaposed to all this is Mars in the sixth house now with Uranus. 
And what do you need to do? Well, you need to exercise more. You need to eat better. Um, you need to take better care of your health. In fact, I wish that, you know, the old Trumpster would have, like, at the beginning of this pandemic, sent everybody a bunch of vitamin C and D3 and masks and gloves and just got ourselves, you know, set up right from the get-go so we didn't have to go through this thing of, like, who gets a vax and who doesn't, you know? And... <laughs> Well, I'm going to get my minking mink. <laughs> it reminds me of Monty Python in The Life of Brian or whatever, you know, when they were crucifying him. Crucifixion? Why such favoritism? Why do I? Why do they get to get crucified? No, I don't. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. All right. Greetings, Capricorn. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, welcome to your horoscope. Um. So, you know, Pluto's been giving you insights, it's been giving you change, transformation. A lot of people are scared about Pluto. I, I understand, you know, Pluto can be scary. Um, you don't have to be scared of Pluto. I mean, transformation is like a snake shedding its skin. It's about growth. And you need to be ready that, I like what Titnot Hogg said here, it's like a seed only germinates in darkness. Grapes can't be made into grape juice or wine unless they're crushed. You know, we don't get olive oil out of olives unless they're pressed. And this is what's happening to all of us <clears throat> since this pandemic began and all these um, Saturn ruled, you know, we had Capricorn mostly last year. We're having Aquarius this year. And it's just like, this is all about limits. It's all about laws. This is all about depression. This is all about restriction. This is all about revolution. Um, and we need to adjust accordingly. And for you, it's your money and you can make a lot of money right now. It's also your family, what they're doing. It's also things affecting your throat and your neck and probably a combination of all three for many of you. So that's what to look at. And here we go to Aquarius. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter lines with Mars. Well, I mean, Jupiter and Mars are squared right now. It is not, it is not a picnic, folks. <laughs> so greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your uh, horoscope. So we've got this whole Saturn-Jupiter thing this whole year. And, you know, Saturn's in the strength place. You know, and Jupiter, not so much. Um, you know, but Jupiter's a brighter planet than, than Saturn. Okay. And then Uranus is over down in your fourth house about your feelings with Mars. And it's like, you feel like you want to move. And I get that, you know, we feel restricted. We want to get away. We want to escape. We want to make things better. <clears throat> but the whole world is watching you. You know, if anyone has a focus on them and their energy right now, it's Aquarius. Okay. So everything's about you your friends, where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to do it. And um, since you, since Venus is moving in your first house this week, there's a softening. Hmm, the softening of the heart, you know, and this willingness to be a little more creative, a little bit more open to love, a little less cold, um, and uh, to have something that's touching, that your needs are being met and you're helping others meet their needs. Okay, now, finally, the sign of karma itself, Pisces. Okay, so Pisces, dear Pisces, how are you doing today? Um, yeah, it's been rough out there, that's all I can say. And um, we need to get you in, in good alignment. And to get you in good alignment, um, pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to your karma, pay back debts. Let go of things that you really didn't need. There's a lot of loss going on. There's a lot of death. There's a lot of things missing in your life. And um, But if you get into that faith place, if you get into the wilderness, if you just let go of all the things that bothered you, this is going to be a great week. And I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for your sensitivity. We're going to do this next week. Cosmic Cab Planetary Persuader. Don't forget to like, share, and ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.